Yo, it is this kind of comments right here that causes us to continue to preach the gospel, the true gospel of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. My brother, you were once enemy to Christ. And yet on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Christ says it best. If you cannot forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you. This is why we call these so-called Hebrew Israelites to leave the camp because of this mentality right here. And because it is mentality right here, you went your black ass into slavery and your nations rule over your ass and you still don't know who you are. I'm gonna start by giving all the praises, glory and honor to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Arachakwadash. Double understood the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well, peace, blessings, and salutations. Until the four elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the earth. These lost black pet Christians. And this is why the Lord got to, you know, he got to reduce the numbers to where there's a, a one third and then you got the two thirds that's just going to, you know, they're not going to make it. And uh, Jake, with this mentality, that plantation Christian mentality, they're going to get rubbed out. Um. All throughout the scriptures, the Lord repaid our enemies for what they've done. The scriptures say, he, uh, he that touch of you touch of the apple of, uh, of my eye. So what do you have to say for the Heavenly Father for the times that he brought down the enemies of Israel? We still keep the Passover. That was about the Lord taking down the enemy after they enslaved us for hundreds of years. What about uh, the Feast of uh, Dedication, Hanukkah? You know what it took to rededicate the temple? Men had to go to war. Israelites, Jews, so-called black men, the real Jews, they had to go to war with so-called white people, which were Greeks. Tow their ass up in war, and we was given a break, and we were able to go into the temple and clean it out because it was desecrated. They set up uh, uh, altars where they were sacrificing swine's flesh in the Lord's temple, carcasses of animals all right, that we're not supposed to touch because it's unclean and abominable. And after we did that, we celebrated in a feast for eight, for eight days, giving gifts to each other and dedicating the temple. So what is this guy talking about? And guess what? Even the Lord who you, who you quote, he's, a, he, he's in the temple celebrating that particular high, that feast day, that high holy day. Commemorating us taking down those Greeks. Let's prove that real quick. These Christians don't know nothing, man. Let's go to John 10. John 10 and 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication. And it was winter. And Yahushua walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So he was present at this feast day. This is the feast of dedication. All right. And we read 1 Maccabees, the fourth chapter, the third and fourth chapter, so you can understand what went on, so you can understand the history. All right. We were dealing with enemies, all right, which were the Greeks at the time, which Daniel prophesied of there being a leopard. That represented Alexander, 
And then he was going to have the four generals that came after him, which ensued into two dynasties. You had the Seleucid and you had the Ptolemaic dynasty. All right. And the temple was under attack by the, uh, well, both dynasties, really. But during uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, who was under the Seleucid dynasty, he was the one that desecrated the temple. And he also made it to where um, we couldn't be seen keeping the, the Sabbath day. We couldn't be seen uh, uh, circumcising ourselves or getting circumcised. We couldn't keep none of our own customs. So we had to go to war. All right. So this was uh, one race against another race. And the Lord was down with us taking them down. Dedication, it says uh, consecration is from the Greek uh, Echania. And it says, in particular, the annual feast celebrated eight days beginning in the 25th of Cheslev, middle of our December, instituted by Judas Maccabees in memory of the cleansing of the temple from the pollution of Antiochus Epiphanes. All right. So this is a celebration of the takedown of an enemy. But I thought we were supposed to forgive. Matter of fact, that same uh, man, he tried to repent. And guess what? The Lord didn't forgive him. But you wouldn't know that uh, you, 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 you black lost Christian, man. Was it at 2 Maccabees 9 or I think maybe 10? See if I can find it. Yep. This is a second Maccabees nine, and I'm gonna start at verse. Um, I'll start at the top. It says about the about that time came Antiochus with dishonor out of the country of Persia, for he had entered the city called Persepolis and went about to rob the temple. And to hold the city, whereupon the multitude running to defend themselves with their weapons, put them to flight. And so it happened that Antiochus, being put to flight of the inhabitants, returned with shame. All right, and you had an incident where um, I gotta I, I gotta go back and uh, restudy it, but there was a general who 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 he drew a line and dared him to step over it. And said that if you step over this line, we we going to war. And uh, he called his bluff and uh, he didn't want no smoke. So he went back to Jerusalem to try to take us out. Matter of fact, he did come in and uh, kill killed Israelites. Right? It says, now when he came to Ecbectane, news was brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus. Then swelling with anger, he thought to avenge upon the Jews the disgrace done unto him by those that made him flee. Therefore commanded he his chariot man to drive without ceasing and to dispatch the journey, the judgment of the Most High God now following him. For he had spoken proudly in his sort that he would come to Jerusalem and make it a common burying place of the Jews. So this is his burning rage of anger against us uh, just because he got punked. It had nothing to do with us, right? But the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. Or as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless came upon him and sore torments of the inner parts. So the Lord... Uh, sent them a, a, a illness that, that that caused them to deteriorate. It was very painful. Okay? Excruciating pain. So he, he, he got the Lord weakened his ass. And that most justly, for he had tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Howbeit, he nothing at all ceased from his bragging, but still was filled with pride breathing out fire in his rage against the Jews and commanding to haste the journey. But it came to pass that 
he fell down from his chariot, carried violently, so that having a sore fall, all the members of his body were much pained. And thus he that a little of like it, and thus he that a little afore thought he might command the waves of the sea, so proud was he beyond the condition of man. He thought he was on the level of a god. He tried to exalt himself. And the Lord showed him in that moment that he's just man, he's just a man. The same attitude that these devils have to this day because of their technology and them being at the height of their power and having all this authority on the earth. And the Lord's going to uh, bring them down too. He's going to humble these devils, it says, and weigh the high mountains in a balance was now cast on the ground and carried in a horse litter, showing forth unto all the manifest power of the Most High, so that the worms rose up out of the body of his wicked man, and whilst he lived in sorrow and pain, his flesh fell away, and the filthiness of his smell was noisome to all his army. And the man that thought a little afore he could reach to the stars of heaven, no man could endure to carry for his intolerable stink. So it was so bad that he start, it started to smell. Right? Here, therefore, being plagued, he began to leave off his great pride, and to come to the knowledge of himself by the scourge of the Mosai, his pain increasing every moment. And when he himself could not abide his own smell, he said these words, it is meet to be subject unto the Mosai God, and that a man that is mortal should not think, should not proudly think of himself if he were God. This wicked person bowed also unto the Lord, who now no more would have mercy upon him, but I thought we we're supposed to forgive. You know, we're supposed to have mercy upon each other. But guess what? That's from Israelite to Israelite. It has nothing to do with these other nations, man. And this clown had the nerve to, to quote Yahawashai, talking about the, the, the crowd of Jakes who gave Yahawashai up. Which ultimately, the Lord got vengeance on them. Because what happened 30 years after that? 30 to 40 years later. Now you have some of them that were forgiven because they got converted years later. But a lot of the ones that put that curse upon themselves by saying, you know, uh, uh, you know, let his blood be upon us and our children. 30 to 40 years later, 70 AD happens. None of them got away. So what is this guy talking about? The Lord was talking about his people. He wasn't talking about the Romans. The Romans, they, they, they ended up falling. And they're enemies. The Lord's going to come back and he's going to crush the, the modern Roman Empire, which is America, the European Union, NATO. He's going to come back and crush them. And you're talking about forg forgiveness. This is, Christianity is a sickness, man. That was the one of the that was the worst thing that ever happened, man. That religion. Look at what the, the, the mindset it put you in. You you still in mental shackles. That's why none of y'all gonna make it unless you uh, the Lord recover you up out of that, man. It says that the holy city to the which he was going in haste to lay it even with the ground and to make it a common burying place. He was set at liberty and as touching the Jews whom he had judged not worthy so much as to be buried, but to be cast out with their children to be devoured of the fowls and wild beasts. He would make all them equals in the citizens of Athens. So he's trying to make he's trying to make it right now. You know, he's thinking that, you know, if I can uh, make things right and make you all, all equal citizens, you know, I, I, I you know, Basically, you know, try to uh, uh, right my wrongs. Maybe I'll be forgiven. Maybe he'll take this plague off of me. He thought wrong. Well, he thought wrong. The Lord didn't show this devil any mercy. It says, in the, the holy temple, which before he had spoiled, he would garnish with goodly gifts and restore all the holy vessels with many more. And out of his own revenue, defray the charges belonging to the sacrifices. Yeah, and that also he would become a Jew himself. So 
He even wants to convert. He's willing to even go that far. And he and he's and he was a straight heathen. All right. The Lord, oh, uh, the Lord, there was a reason why he did not want the heathen in the temple because they will profane the temple. All right. It says, and go through all the world that was inhabited and declare the power of, of the Most High God. But for all this, his pains would not cease for the just judgment of the Most High was, a, was come upon him. Therefore, despairing of his health, he wrote unto the Jews a letter underwritten containing the form of a supplication after this manner. And tied his king and governor to the good Jews, his citizens, wish of much joy, health, and prosperity. If you and your children fare well and your affairs be to your contentment, I give very great thanks to the Most High, <laughs> having my hope in heaven. There ain't no hope for this devil. All right, the Lord hates him. As for me, I was weak, or else I would have remembered kindly your honor and good will returning out of Persia. And being taken with a grievous disease, I thought it necessary to care for the common safety of all, not in, not distrusting mine health, but having great help. It's like a hope to escape this sickness. But considering that even my father, at what time he led an army into the high countries, appointed a successor to the end that if anything fell out contrary to expectation or if any tidings were brought that were grievous, they of the land, knowing of whom the state was left, might not be troubled. Again, considering how that the princes that are borders and neighbors unto my kingdom wait for opportunities and expect what should be the event. I have appointed my son and as king, whom I often committed and commended unto you and to many of you when I went up into the high provinces to whom I have written as followeth. Therefore, I pray and request you to remember the benefits that I have done unto you generally and in special and that every man will be still faithful to me and my son. And this is his hopeful thinking. For I'm persuaded that he understanding my mind will favorably and graciously yield to your desires. Thus the murderer and blasphemer having suffered most grievously as he entered other, it's like entreated other men. So died he a miserable death in a strange country in the mountains. So the Lord didn't have no mercy on him. He, he put his ass to death. All right, but we're supposed to what read this and look back and forgive this dude. He would need to be forgiven. It's no different than what the, these devils did over here. Treated us inhumane. They tormented us. So we're supposed to for, forgive and forget. That's that. That's that plantation Christian bullshit, man. All right. Don't try to take what the Lord said on the cross to his people and try to apply that to, 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 to our actual enemies, man. Okay? Even King David, who was after the uh whose mind was after the uh, the most high heart, he even said, Let's get it. Psalms 139 and 21, it says. I'll start at 20 says, for they speak against thee wickedly and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. And guess what? When our Lord returns, that's who he's coming for. Psalms 110. <clears throat> Psalms 110. And four, it says, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. So that's, coming, that's saying he's coming back to judge and make war with all these nations. All right. And you got the Edomites who was at the helm of us being brought down, us being enslaved. Right. The Lord's coming to get him. Isaiah 63. Why ain't the Lord going to forgive them? Isaiah 63 and one. Who is who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? 
and that garment is like him that treadeth in the wine fat. I have trod in the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, where I would tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury. But I thought he was supposed to forgive. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeem is come. All right, and, and the vengeance, it gets specific. Let's go to Isaiah 34. Yeah, this is uh, Isaiah 34. And five, it says, for my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, all right, which is the Greek way of saying Edom. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys and rams. Before the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of the recompenses for the controversy of Zion. So that's what he's doing. He's, that's what he's going to come back for. All right. Because he's going to plead there for his people. So he's going to, that's why he's lining these nations up for war right now in the East. Because you got imposters and heathens fighting over land that don't belong to, to, to neither of them. All right. So this dude, he, he, he's, you know, he's still in that slave mentality, man, trying to call us out. And this devil going to show his horns in these last days. You're going you to see it. And calling upon that JC word, let's see where that gets you. The Lord doesn't even recognize that word. So. That, 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 that's that's it, man. You know, I mean, I, there's way more precepts I can go to. You know, Ezekiel 25, Ezekiel 35, Amos, the first chapter, Revelation uh, 13, 9 and 10. You know, he that, that uh, leader from the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. That's all in this, all throughout the scriptures, man. When we forgive, we forgive one another. That's talking about our nation forgiving your brother esau is not he, he he broke that covenant he's not our brother these other nations they're not our neighbor they're they're heathens and they're our enemies pursuing the psalms the 83rd chapter and they've always worked in tangent to cut us off from being a nation so if you want to get in between these nations and and, and try to uh be an advocate for them go ahead And the Lord's going to destroy you, you two-thirds, man. So anyway, I'm going to close out with that, man. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. I'll shy. And into the next lesson, Shalom.